All right, there we go. My name is Brad Walshman. I'm an engineer that works with the Nashville Department of Transportation, uh, especially with the Neighborhood Street Traffic Calming Program. And this evening, we're here to talk about Grace Point Lane. So really appreciate you joining us here. Uh, before I get going, I wanna introduce or allow my colleague Dylan to introduce himself. Dylan, could you come off of mute and introduce yourself, please? Yeah, uh, I'm here at the Kimley Horn office and I'm serving on the DS team and just kind of helping Brad with traffic calming projects. Excellent, we really appreciate y'all taking the time this nut tonight. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to spend about 15 minutes or so going through a presentation, uh, but we have an hour together, so we are going to make sure we uh, address any questions or comments or anything. But I'd say the presentation on the front end is going to be about 15 minutes. Uh, and along the way, you may have some questions or some thoughts. We definitely want to get to that at the end. We want to make sure we can really have some good conversations. So what we'd like to ask you to do is we'd like to ask you to do uh, one of two things. Uh, the first is at the very end, if you just want to be able to come off, if everybody wants to mute right now, if you want to come off of mute at the end, we're going to have some great dialogue or some uh, questions. Um, another option you have, if you just don't want to wait, you can chat. And everyone's uh, WebEx screen on the bottom right corner, there should be a chat function or a chat bar or button or something. And you can put, you can chat and type your questions or comments in. Um, and we we'll, can also read through those at the end and get that. Either, however people prefer to do it, we can definitely get feedback that way. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and launch into the presentation real quick. Um, Dylan, I just want to make sure technology, just want to make sure that it's all working right. Are you able to see the, 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 the title slide, Dylan? I can see it. Okay, great. I'm yeah. going to assume everybody can see it then. All right. Thanks for that feedback, everybody. So we're going to talk about neighborhood street traffic calming and Grace Point Lane. And we want to make a quick clarification. Um, we we got this street was applied for and the application said grace point lane between battle avenue and oak trail drive and so that's what we're here to talk about however we we have discovered and learned as many of you will probably know that actually is crothers road for a portion of it i believe y'all can correct me if i'm wrong i believe it's crothers road at battle avenue and then it turns into grace point lane uh and then to oak oak trail drive we are looking at the entirety of from Battle Road to Oak Trail Drive. So I just wanna make sure we clarify that because it's called Grace Point Lane, but I believe it switches to Crothers Road uh, going west toward Battle, and we are looking all the way to Battle with this project. So just want, and we'll have a map that shows that. We just wanted to clarify that off out of the top. So, so what is traffic calming? Well, the Neighborhood Street Traffic Calming Program focuses on residential streets and we're looking to identify physical solutions where uh, vehicles are just going to experience slower speeds or ha have to really look for, have to where the road's going to see a speed reduction because of the traffic calming uh, features that we can add. Now we like to refer to the three E's of traffic calming. The first E is education. This meeting is a great example of that. We as the engineers feel like we have a lot of value uh, in engineering the roads to slow vehicles down you all live out here so you are the uh, experts of the road because you all live out here so together we really make a great team to talk about traffic calming and ways to reduce vehicle speeds um, the second e is enforcement uh, enforcing posted speed limits is absolutely part of traffic calming it's something ndot and the engineers don't really have much jurisdiction over but enforcing posted speed limits absolutely is part of it but NDOT doesn't do much with that. What NDOT does do much with is this 30, the engineering, doing something engineering wise with the streets to look to reduce these vehicle speeds. That's what we're gonna focus on more with this uh, meeting here. One of the reasons the traffic calming program uh, is, exists is this notion of safety and a vision of zero deaths on our streets. Um, th these graphs really tell a story we wanna make sure people understand if a pedestrian is has an unfortunate crash where pedestrians hit by a moving vehicle if that car is going 25 miles per hour that pedestrian has an 89 percent chance of surviving the crash but if you look at the right side of the slide that same vehicle is going 45 miles per hour and the really awful crash of hitting a pedestrian happens at that that, that pedestrian has a 35 percent chance of survival that is why ndot and metro nashville are really trying to focus on residential streets slowing vehicles down 
So if there isn't the unfortunate crash of something like a pedestrian getting hit, um, we want there to be a higher chance of survival with the slower uh, moving vehicles. So that's one of the reasons why the traffic calming program uh, exists. Um, so there are many streets that get applied for. Over 500 neighborhood streets throughout Metro Davidson County have been applied for. And this past summer, uh, a few months ago, 85 streets were chosen uh, in Grace Point Lane, or as I clarified, really the western part of Crothers Road near Battle and Grace Point Lane were selected as one of those 85. And that's why we're here talking today. Um, we like to pause. Um, we're here to talk about the traffic calming program, but there is a tool we like to make sure everyone understands or knows about. It's Hub Nashville. Uh, you can call 311 or you can call hub.nashville.gov. This could be for anything that's not traffic calming. You may think there needs to be some signs, uh, like some more stop signs somewhere, uh, or you may think that there needs to be something done with the traffic signal or a storm drain inlet is uh, blocked. Just anytime you feel like the city needs to know something, this is a one-stop shop where your request can usually get routed to the right stop. So 311 or hub.nashville.gov for anything not traffic calming. If it is traffic calming, Dylan and I, we're here for you tonight, so we got you, but we like to know sure everybody knows about this resource for any other matters. So real quick, back to Grace Point Lane. I mentioned 500, over 500 streets got applied for. We collect data on all 500 of those streets, including Grace Point Lane. Um, I do not exa exactly remember where Grace Point Lane landed on the scoring wise, but I know it was one of the 85 streets that was chosen. But every street looks at data and gets scored based on this pie chart. You can see a large uh, amount of that score is how fast are the cars going over uh, 25 miles per hour. But you'll see some other things such as the volume, if there's things like uh, bikeways or sidewalks along the road, if there's been some really unfortunate injuries or even fatalities on the road. We take all this into consideration to figure out where should the traffic calming program really focus on and this past time, like I mentioned, Grace Point Lane was one of those streets, or again, the western part of Crothers and Grace Point Lane. So here we are, just to kind of show you um, the 85th percentile speed, um, which isn't the average, but the 85th percentile is what we uh, traffic engineers typically look at, was 34 miles per hour uh, when we collected the data uh, a little while back. You can see there's about almost 2,600 cars per day driving along the road, and then we have just the pavement width along that street. We usually look at that for the design, but we just like to summarize it here. Again, it says we're looking at Grace Point Lane from Battle Road to Oak Trail Drive. Sorry if I'm being uh, repetitive. I just want to make sure we don't miss it. And we're really looking at the, the Crothers Road and Grace Point Lane between Battle and Oak Trail. So apologize for keep repeating that. Just want to make sure we all get it. And here's that, that map that I was mentioning uh, that kind of shows that, that link, that yellow, kind of the green line with the yellow highlight around it. That is the street we're focusing on. I think the purple line means something else, but it's not part of the traffic calming uh, project here. It's just going to focus on that green line with the yellow highlight. So we'd like to talk about some of the options that we have that we usually look at. We call it our toolkit to calm the speeds along a street like Crothers Road and Grace Point Lane. Um, one of the more common things that NDOT looks for in the traffic calming program or, or considers are something called these speed cushions. These are actual speed cushions throughout Nashville. They're black rubberized modular devices. At their highest height, they're three inches off the pavement, and uh, cars must drive over them. Uh, they're similar to speed humps, but you can see their shape. We call them speed cushions because of their shape. Um, and you'll see that second bullet there says reduced impact to emergency response vehicles. I'm going to go to the next slide and then come back to this one, and that second bullet will make a little more sense. Another option we have are these speed tables. They look very similar. These are also actual Nashville area speed tables. Um, but you'll see instead of there being those gaps in between them, the speed table goes all the way across the street. Um, very similar, but it just goes all the way across the street. Um, speed tables will absolutely reduce vehicle speeds. We've seen data and some studies that support that. But it will also slow down uh, emergency vehicles such as fire trucks or ambulances. Um, and so we are going to be slowing vehicles down if the traffic calming project, you know, gets approved and is successful. Um, but the speed tables will slow all the vehicles down. I'm going to go back to the cushions. The reason that these cushions have those gaps in between is because fire trucks and ambulances, the front axle, they have a wider wheelbase. They can actually straddle 
the speed cushions and their tires can go through those gaps. Normal passenger vehicles have a little narrower wheelbase, but fire trucks, ambulances, a little wider they can straddle. Because of all the weight in the back of those large vehicles, um, usually there are double wheels. They still have to go up on the sides of the cushions, but compared to a speed table, it is a little less of an impact when one of those emergency vehicles is going over a speed cushion. So I would say speed cushions are definitely one of the more common devices. We just kind of want to talk about that. And we just sort of mentioned here, talked about the speed tables also. Um, here are some studies that we've done. These are actual Nashville before and after speed studies that we performed on some streets uh, after speed, or once speed, for a speed cushion design street before they were installed and after. And as you can see, we are seeing positive results that with the speed cushions, uh, speeds are uh, lowering, which is exactly what we want. So this is just sort of demonstration that we are seeing uh, good results with the speed cushions. There is another uh, tool in the toolkit. It's these radar feedback signs. And when a vehicle approaches that uh, bottom is an electronic readout of a speed, it actually is doing a radar and it'll report what that speed is. I believe in Nashville, once that number exceeds the posted speed limit, it turns red. Sometimes they flash at you. I think in Nashville, they choose one that turns red. Just kind of let the motorist know, hey, you're, you're, you're not supposed to be driving that fast. Um, we've seen um, positive results for these. Sometimes it's not as, a it really depends on a street by street basis. We've seen some that worked well and some that didn't work as well. And we've had to kind of look at that again. But these radar feedback signs do have their place where they definitely can be very helpful. Um, another option, uh, in the toolkit are these uh, pavement markings, uh, specifically these white line on, on the edge of the road pavement markings. Uh, each of these pictures here, the white lines used to not be there. And as part of the traffic calming program, we recommended adding them because believe it or not, those white lines narrowing the available driving area for vehicles, it can have a positive effect to reduce vehicle speeds. Um, and so uh, as opposed to when you just have a very, very wide area of pavement, um, so that was a recommendation on these two streets and that narrowing, well, that was the intent for it. So uh, sometimes streets are too narrow pavement wise, there's not room to do it. But when streets are a little wider, that could be something we look at as well. Uh, we also look out for things like bulb outs and chicanes. Uh, the picture on the left is a bulb out. Again, you're, the idea is just sort of just to narrow the area that a vehicle can drive through. It can have a positive impact uh, on vehicles, just since or motorists and vehicles sensing that it's a little narrower, maybe they can't be as uh, careless with their driving. Picture on the right is something called a chicane, uh, where they're ha a motorist is having to kind of turn their steering wheel a little bit to the right and to the left to keep on the road. That turning of the steering wheel usually has a natural slight speed reduction or speed reduction. Uh, so that's the reasoning for that chicane. Um, again, some streets, it's a, it's a good spot. Some streets, are just not, they're not wide enough. It really depends on the street. And then traffic circles are also in the toolkit. Uh, these are uh, like roundabouts, but much, much smaller, uh, much, much smaller. Uh, if we can find an intersection where we don't have to widen the intersection, we don't have to add pavement, don't have to take any right away. If we can just install something like this in the intersection the way it is, that is something that we can also evaluate and consider uh, so having installed many of these in the program, usually a lot of the neighborhood intersections are a little too small, but every once in a while we do find a spot for it. So those are the traffic circles. So this is an initial thought of what traffic calling could look like along Crothers Road, Grace Point Lane. I want to make sure we communicate this is a concept design. Uh, this is sort of our first look at it. This does not have to be the final design, but we always like to kind of walk people through the program different options in the toolkit, and then get, present a concept design just to get feedback. So again, this may or may not be the final uh, well, we, final design that we proceed with, but we always like to put something in front of the neighborhood just to get some feedback. And so what this is showing here is each uh, yellow trapezoid with a C in it represents one location for speed cushions. If you think about those photos with the speed cushions, I count four of the yellow trapezoids with C's, which means between Battle Road and Oak Trail Drive, we're proposing four locations where a set of speed cushions would be installed. Uh, we look at things like, are there, two, are there are steep hills that we have to avoid because of how these things get bolted in? We also look at spacing. We look at the spacing between stop signs and in between. If we install them too close together, um, they get 
a little um it's almost just like a little too much there's just too many of them along a street but if we space them uh too far apart then it gives motorists who maybe don't want to drive the posted speed limit uh more room to accelerate and get more speed so we try to find a spacing that is appropriate and with that between battle road and oak trail drive we've proposed four of these speed cushion uh, locations so again, we're definitely at the end of this presentation going to want people to come off and mute, or if there's a lot of people, maybe ask questions in the chat, or you can put questions in the chat now. But we, we will absolutely come back to this. But we kind of just want to give an idea of maybe what a traffic calming design uh, could look like uh, in, on, on the street here. So we like to make sure people understand the program flowchart. Um, there's an app, if we start at the top left and kind of follow the circles with the arrows, there's an application. Uh, there's a prioritization and selection. We're here because you were one of the 85 streets selected. The one, in the circle in the red is our neighborhood meeting. That's what we're doing now. And after this meeting, we're then going to go into a design. We just showed you a concept design, but we always do a site visit after this first, at this meeting here. And we make sure we feel good about our measurements and our engineering, and we're going to prepare uh, that design. So then after that design is prepared, um, th there's a couple of options. Um, and we're hoping if Hemi got get some feedback at the conclusion of this meeting. Um, one option is after the design's ready, uh, we could go straight to the online ballot where the net residential property owners along the street get the chance to vote on whether they want this or not. We'll get to that in just a minute as well. Another option is if, if there's this discussion on this meeting here that mm, we might wanna have a second meeting, we can have that. We can, once the final design that's more detailed is ready, we can have a second meeting similar to this, present that final, more detailed design at the second meeting. And then after that second meeting, we go to the online ballot. Um, some neighborhoods prefer either one, but we're trying to kind of give an option. Um, so just know that at some point near the end of this meeting, we'll kind of want to get some feedback on that. Um, but I want to talk about this online ballot, which again, we're not there yet. But once the final detailed design is ready, what we do is we put that final design up on the NDOT website and we send out mailers very similar to the mailers that hopefully many of you received advertising this meeting that we're at. And the mailer is gonna have a, a unique code. Everyone, every person and address gets a unique ID code. And you'll, you'll be given a web link where you can go onto the NDOT website and put in your name information and whether you wanna vote yes or no for the traffic calming design. So let's say that concept design that we, showed earlier let's say that's what the final design looks like uh, you can vote yes i support and want four speed cushions along the street uh, or you can vote no i do not want the speed cushions along the street and what we'll do is uh, there will be a six-week voting period in the future that opens up and at the end of that six-week voting period we'll close the voting and we will tally and if two-thirds of those who voted voted yes we want this then it is gonna happen and these streets will get the traffic calming. Um, if that two thirds of those who vote threshold is not met, then uh, you know if it's speed cushions, like those will not happen. And we may get back with the neighborhood and the council member on some alternative designs or alternative things that we could do that maybe wouldn't put something in the street. Um, but that is the opportunity that uh, you all, if you live, if you have residential property owner along Crothers Road and along uh, Grace Point Lane, like your properties actually touch these streets, um, you will be eligible for this voting. Um, so that's what will be kind of in the distant future. Um, again, we can also come back to this with the questions. Um, this is an example of that ballot zone. Um, what that ballot zone, what those yellow uh, parcels or polygons are meant to show are people's properties. And the properties that are eligible for the voting are the ones when the property touches Crothers Road or Grace Point Lane in that area. We, um, we remove uh, vacant properties. Uh, if there's any churches or schools, they only get one vote. Um, and then businesses are not eligible. I'm not sure if there's any businesses out here, but there we do have some neighborhoods where that's, a, that's the case. So, um, But again, that's kind of in the future when there's voting and balloting. Um, that's kind of how the, the process will go. Um, so that was a lot of information, and we can definitely go back to many of these slides. Um, but I just wanted to kind of walk through that presentation of the traffic calming program, what it is, how Grace Point Lane Crothers Road got selected, some of the toolbox items, and then um, and then kind of what an initial concept design may look like. 
Uh, so I'm going to ask my colleague Dylan if you could come off a of mute. Um, I can kind of see on my other monitor there have been a myriad of comments and questions, which is fantastic. What I'm going to do is I may ask Dylan to uh, read off some of the questions or comments, and then I can kind of respond out loud. Um, and then we can also move in a, little, a little bit to have people coming off of mute if they'd rather voice questions or comments that way. So Dylan, could you start with the first one, I guess, uh, with what, any comments or questions? Yeah, we have a few. Um, That's great. The first question was from John Stern asking if other vehicles other than um, the emergency vehicles also have wider wheel width axles for their uh, transport and I, such as FedEx or like Amazon truck. And uh, I guess I'm assuming that maybe this is concerning if they could also straddle the cushions. Right. You know, uh, the honest answer is I don't know. We haven't really measured many other vehicles. We know that the speed cushion, the manufacturers that make them really kind of market the, the emergency vehicle aspect of it. Um, I do not know what the wheelbase width is of like a FedEx truck or a or UPS truck or anything like that. Um, even school buses. I, I, I truly don't know. Um, I think that what we usually end up, we've had some discussions on this and we usually come back to the emergency vehicle. Uh, aspect of it. If there is an emergency, this is a way to calm traffic on these streets while still allowing an emergency vehicle that needs to respond somewhere to get there relatively quickly. That's kind of what we have kind of landed on is what our typical opinion is on that, Dylan, and, and, and neighborhood. Okay. Uh, the next question was from uh, Collins asking if a stop sign could be implemented at the intersection of Clement Street and Carruthers? Yes. No, thank you for that question. So as part of the traffic calming program, the answer is no. Um, and the reason is because is it's been found that stop signs uh, typically aren't an effective traffic calming measure to reduce vehicle speed. Stop signs are more of a traffic control where at an intersection it's determined, you know, should two of the legs have a stop sign, should all four of them have one. Um, and I will say, having worked with the traffic calming program for some time now, um, it, it's really it's really unfortunate that it seems like there's many neighborhoods that have always stops. And in meetings like this, the ask is, can you get people to stop running stop signs and blowing through them? Um, which, as a traffic engineer, really bothers me with all the red light running and the stop sign running. So that's another reason why we don't rely on that for traffic calming, because we are hearing so much feedback about stop signs that are out there that unfortunately motorists are not uh, heating and are blowing through them. And so that's another reason why we usually don't install them as part of the traffic calming program. But I will add, if you do feel like there's an intersection like Crothers at Clemens, where you feel like there should be something like an all-way stop, that is absolutely a topic that you could submit to the Hub Nashville, either going to 311 or going to the hub.nashville.gov. So that is something you could request there, but we, we don't do stop signs in the traffic calming program. Brad, this is Peter Gross. I don't mean to jump in line here, but I don't type. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. I, I have a question. Um, I, you know, to me, the speed bump sounds like a great solution for that area. But um, we, we have, in part, a traffic calming problem on Grace Point Road because when there's a trouble on 24, we get a lot of non-traditional uh, traffic um, circumventing that problem by going on Brothers Road to Grace Point. And um, um, we're about to begin the uh, development of our town center here, I understand. And in the original um, uh, design for that, that Carruthers Road takes a hard right into the into the um, town center instead of taking the sweeping curve. That's only about it's less than seventy five feet from your stop sign there. And 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 if they put that road in, that road will also go out to battle, which will help disperse the traffic. So I know you guys assign specific problems, but um, you, you know who's overseeing these traffic development initiatives that were put in legal plans at the beginning of these developments 
to make sure that we didn't run into these problems. Yeah, no, I appreciate your question. I say Dylan and I are so siloed in tunnel vision on the traffic calming program that I understand what you're asking, but I, per I personally do not have a good answer. I know NDOT does have engineers that focus on what you're talking about, but I'm afraid Dylan and I are not able to help you with that. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. All right, Dylan, what, what's, what are some of the next questions and comments? Kind of uh, following up on that stop sign at the intersection of Clement and Carruthers. Uh, do you think it would be an option to add a, a roundabout? Yeah, yeah, so that that is something we're happy to evaluate. Um, I apologize, I'm trying to get to the slides. So, um, and I just, you know, engineers, we can be particular, so please bear with me. A roundabout is usually a much bigger uh, footprint. The, the diameter of that circle is a little bigger. So we probably would not put a roundabout uh, in the in the intersection uh, that would require probably a right of way acquisition, a lot of reconstruction. It just wouldn't happen in the traffic calling program. But a smaller size traffic circle is absolutely um, something that we could consider. What we'll need to do is we could see if there's a diameter of circle that would cause the traffic calming effect we'd be looking for, without having to you know widen the intersection and move anything. Uh, it gets expensive and gets priced out of the traffic calming program, honestly. So if there's an interest in that, we'd be happy to analyze that. Uh, this could be one of our action items coming out of this meeting here um, to at least see if it's feasible. It may not be, it may not fit, but every once in a while we do find an intersection where it does fit. Thanks, Brad. And there was another question kind of asking about if we can manipulate the dimensions of the cushions or the tables at all uh maybe to make it more comfortable to drive across them at 25 miles an hour but yeah so um sometimes i'll try to answer a a revised question um i'm, ho I'm hoping that'll be helpful um we do put up usually a lot of these, you'll see in the upper left photo, there's a warning sign that says speed cushions. And there's a little warning speed that says 20 miles per hour. What that's doing is it's warning vehicles that they may wanna drive 20 miles per hour going over these speed cushions. Um, mm -hmm. what, we, what we do get a question of is what's the comfortable speed to go over these speed cushions? And our, my answer is usually it's relative. You know, some people may wanna go a little faster. Some people may wanna go a little slower. Um, I, I'll tell you from my experience, if you try to take it right at the posted speed limit or just a little higher, um, it's going to be uncomfortable uh, from my own personal experience driving a sedan. Uh, but some people may want to grow over it very slower. So um, what we try to do is we acknowledge that the speed cushions vehicles are probably going to drive a little slower than the posted speed limit. And it's possible that in between they may drive the posted speed limit or just knowing human nature, they may even get a little above the posted speed limit. What we're trying to do is get the average speed along the entire street closer to that posted speed limit. Either there's a little bit faster in between and a little slower between the cushions. So some people may be comfortable driving over these at 25. Some people may be comfortable driving at 20, maybe some even at 18 or 17. So that's kind of the best answer. There's not one speed. Um, what I can tell you is that there are different lengths. Um, and I think if you can look at, it's kind of hard to tell, but the examples on the right uh, are a seven foot length, they're just a little shorter. And the examples on the left, the two left most photos are 10 and a half foot, they're a little longer. Um, we are looking to maybe sometimes design speed cushions that are a little longer, um, so they're not as much of a, a short, I guess, jolt driving over them. So we may be looking at something like a 10 and a half foot, uh, maybe a 14 foot long speed cushion. Um, so that's kind of the best answer that I can give. There's not like one design speed but we are trying to find something to reduce speed at these cushions. Great. And there was also a question about if motorists have been considered for any of these traffic uh, calming. Yeah, did you say motorists? Yes. Um, gotcha, yeah, so every, every driver who drives a vehicle is considered a motorist, so I guess the answer would be yes. Motorists, um, in other words, trying to influence the behavior of motorists who might be driving too fast on a street is considered uh, with something like speed cushions. We're trying to lower th those speeds, yeah. 
Brad, I've got another question um, to, and to help me for the next steps here too. Um, how did you get the direction that this would be the area and only area specifically, um, uh, uh, you know, looked at there? Because really from Battle Road all the way down to Walton, that's one organic Waldron. road, Waldron. That's all one organic road. You know, there's not, there's not a half mile difference there. So I'm just curious about a, a, a real solution being for basically what is, you know, 400 yards of a continuous road. Gotcha. No, I appreciate your question. Um, to answer your question, uh, this was, this street was applied for and the application said Grace Point Lane between Battle Avenue and Oak Trail Drive. So we put that in uh, a grouping along with, you know, like I mentioned, 500 plus streets and looked at all the data. And this was one of the ones that was selected. So as far as how that section was chosen, uh, that's how it was chosen. Just like all the other 500 or so streets, we looked at all of them. Um, so that was kind of how that came to be. And I know you mentioned 400 yards. It's actually almost 3,000 feet. So it's well, more like 1,000. It's more like 1,000 yards. So we, it is a kind of a lengthy street. And I know the section over Carruthers from here all the way to Waldron's, of course, a lot longer. Also goes into the city of Laverne. Um, but yeah, but that's how we came to be looking at the segment that we're looking at. Thank you. Yes, sir. Brad, my name is Wayne Duff. Uh, I wanted to sort of follow up with what Peter had brought up. To me, there's there's two issues when you use the term traffic calming. Is the speed of the vehicles on the road, but I think what becomes more of an issue is the quantity of vehicles that are on the road. And what Peter was discussing, uh, you you. You can't just look at Carruthers as handling the traffic within Carruthers itself. We see so much cut through traffic. Is there a way to address slowing down the outside traffic coming through our community? So this project would address the speeds along the, the section that we've been talking about, are you asking about a different project that could be considered from Carruthers from Grace Point Lane all the way out toward Laverne? As Peter just said, there, there's no way to isolate this section of road from Battle to, to uh, Grace Point, Carruthers intersection, whatever you want to call it. There, there's no way to just isolate that because it's, a, it's an entire entity from Waldron Road to, to Battle Road. And our understanding, based on the UDO, that when there's a certain number of houses completed in Carruthers, that Carruthers, Carruthers Crossing, that Carruthers Road will actually be improved all the way to Waldron, which will do nothing but exacerbate the issue that we're having now with the quantity of cars coming through our our subdivision. Right. So one in the same issues. Right. So trap so there are little different issues. Um the first is traffic calming. We're talking about volume, I think, and we're talking about speed. Traffic calming is absolutely wanting to target the speeds on the road. Traffic calming, something like speed cushions may impact the volumes that people are cutting through. It might, but we can't actually do anything. And I can't, we can't guarantee that volumes will change, but we feel pretty good the speeds will lower. So those are kind of two different things, just wanted to clarify. And if there's a desire for this, for the additional Crothers Road from Grace Point Lane out toward Laverne to be considered, then any residential property owner during the application open window can submit an application for traffic calming on that section of Crothers Road to be considered with the 500 plus other streets. Um, so that's that, that's how that could be addressed, but we are focusing on the battle to Oak Trail Drive for this project. Would you entertain putting a mountain at the county line? Hmm. Yeah, a big mountain, that's you know, over three foot. You know, that's, 
a mountain you said that's not in the toolkit but we may need to chat about that we how, how about a toll booth uh, ooh you know dylan and i are taking notes i i like this creativity we'll need to make sure we share this with ndot the mountain idea and the toll booth these are good i like this on <laughs> uh, when this oh. residential development took place it wasn't envisioned that we would be a major thoroughfare and an alternative to i-24 and that's what it's become. All these cars, uh, UPS trucks, FedEx, Amazon, they use our neighborhoods as a shortcut. Is there any way to get it designated as no through trucks? That, through, so uh, to, through the traffic calming program, the answer to your question is no. However, I know that does happen on streets. I do not pretend to know how to do that. My two suggestions, for looking into something like that would be to submit something on the hub Nashville website and also perhaps to uh, coordinate with your council member uh, about this idea as well. I might suggest doing both of those things, but for the traffic calming program, we would not be able to do something like that. These are great. Dylan, I know, Dylan, have there been any other questions or comments in the chat? Just want to make sure I'm checking in with you on those. Just had one more that was asking what what the width of lanes would be to create with the pavement markings. Okay, yeah, I think the, the question may be focused. I'm going to try to go back. Again, I'm a big fan of pictures, so bear with me. I, I'm guessing the picture or the question was kind of getting at would maybe these white edge lines uh, be possible to kind of help uh, with kind of that narrowing and sort of that effect that can have on traffic calming. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, the answer is yes, that is something that we could consider as we do a little more work after this meeting, do some of our field work and site visits when we make sure we take some measurements on your streets. That is something that we could look at. Um, there are times where on these streets here on the slide I'm sharing, that was the white edge lines were all that. Well, no, I apologize. Actually, the left side had the white edge lines and the speed cushions. Um, you can't see the cushions in this no, particular photo. Well, so, um, so, so yes, th th we absolutely could conser consider some yeah. white edge line markings. Now, uh, so what 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 my comment is, and let me try and uh, encompass a couple of things that we're dealing with out here. Um, the question is, how wide would the lanes be that you would create? You said that the roadway is 27 feet wide. How wide would each of those roadways, uh, I assume you guys are traffic engineers, how how wide would you construct those for a 25 mile an hour road? Yeah, so usually what we would do is we would create create 22 feet in between the white lines which if, the, if I said the road was 27 feet, that means there'd be two and a half feet uh, on either side, outside the white lines. Um, that, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it would be. So it'd be basically 11 feet uh, for each direction. 11 plus 11 is 22. So there'd okay. be 22 feet between the white lines. If just first, without taking any measurements, just kind of asking me on the spot, that's probably what it would look like. And, and some of the frustration you're hearing is, uh, I don't know if you realize it or not, but this development is uh, authorized to have up to 3,000 individual housing units when it's built out, plus a couple hundred thousand square feet of commercial space. Okay. Uh, so we're talking about a huge increase in the amount of traffic if you use the seven cars per day per housing unit. Uh, it's going to be a huge increase in uh, the traffic count than what you're seeing today. Um, so we've got to do multiple things. As you say, we have to uh, work with our council person to try and get uh, uh, stop signs. We have to work with Metro Planning and NDOT to try and get traffic calming by design built into the Carruthers Road from the Rutherford County line to what used to be Carruthers Crossing. It was Carruthers at Carruthers, and that's why this uh, development is called Carruthers Crossing. Um, 
that should be doable, uh, but it's not in your bailiwick, as I understand it. But right, I, I I can appreciate all your comments. Thank you, John. Um, it does sound like there's some more growth based on what you and others on this call have said that may increase traffic volumes. Um, what we do know is we're here. This section that's shown on the purple line here on this picture, it's been selected for the traffic calming program. So we have an opportunity now if the residential property owners along the street desire to install traffic calming, which will serve to reduce vehicle speeds on this section. So definitely here's some other concerns that are certainly valid, uh, but and there, but this would this could serve to maybe solve one of the uh, issues or challenges that some of you are experiencing, uh, at least on this stretch. We do have something we could do about it. We, we implemented uh, the, the roadway markings uh, well before uh, the traffic calming program, the Metro was authorized. We did it in Lake Park out in Hermitage on a straightaway that was just a speedway, and it works. The visual change in the observation of the road as you as a driver uh, causes you to slow down. So, and, and John, well, to, to, again, to the other person's point uh, who about the white edge line markings, that's something we can go out and take some measurements of. Uh, and if it's something that'll work, um, the white edge line, edge line markings could absolutely be done regardless of how the vote goes. So, in other words, if something like this design that we're sharing here is what was put forth for a vote, and maybe there's some white edge line markings included in the design, maybe not. But either, either way, if there was a yes vote, uh, Two thirds of those who voted said yes, we want this. Then the speed cushions, the traffic calming would happen, and the white edge lines, if we determine that will work on the street, that would happen. If the vote results in a no, the speed cushions would not happen, but those white edge lines would still happen. So the white edge lines, if we if we determine it's it's, it's a good traffic calming measure and it would work on the street, that that would happen regardless. The vote. Would really focus more on the the traffic calming speed cushions that people would drive over. So I just wanted to use your point to kind of elaborate to the group here on this call, kind of the the vote, what the vote would be for, and that those white edge line markings, if we deem it's possible, would happen either way. Uh, Brad, th this is Wayne again. Uh, I, I guess I'm going to ask you to go back and review the UDO because uh, there is um, side of street parking allowed on Carruthers Road and Grace Point Lane. So if you do if you do side lane marking and bring it in, will you'll eliminate that side road mark uh, parking, won't you? Um you know I I don't necessarily think that adding a white edge line along the street delineates a parking area. Um I can think of some streets where there is occasional on street parking where maybe the uh, left side of the wheels of the vehicle are on the other side of the white line. So that you bring up a good point though, that is something that we'll look at. And again, we have not done our site visit yet. We're very honest about that. That's something we usually do after this meeting. So we, we may go out there and determine to your point, maybe with the on-street parking, maybe the white edge lines would not work, but I don't think that would necessarily also remove from being an option, even if parking is allowed, because there are several neighborhoods throughout Nashville where you know vehicles will park on the street and we'll still implement the white edge lines. Um, so that's something we can take a look at, certainly. Well, I guess part of my uh, request here, Brad, is that uh, before you come make your visit, maybe if you can go back and review the UDO documents for all the Carruthers crossings, because it was it was very specific, it was very well thought out originally uh, as to how the uh, traffic would flow through the community and how people would be able to park in certain areas on, on certain roads. Uh, so just maybe if I could request you, you review those documents before you make certain decisions. Sure, happy to do that. So I want to kind of turn to this concept design. Again, this is sort of our first thoughts. It's something that after this meeting, either way, we'll be doing some measurements, visiting, and preparing a more detailed design that kind of shows exactly where, you know, in front of whose property and whatnot each of these speed cushions would be proposed. 
Um, so I kind of just, I'd like to get some feedback on how people feel about the idea of something like this for speed cushion locations between Battle and Oak Trail Drive, how people feel about that, kind of a thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways, you know, how are people feeling? <laughs> I'd like to talk to the lot where there are some and see if there's any drawbacks. So, you're going to write that on there? Because I don't know, they, they can't really help you do that. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I don't know either. Good question. Yeah, I think it's a great start. It is a good start. I think that further discussion we're almost going to have to take your placement and walk up and down the street like many of us do every day <laughs> uh, since we do have sidewalks in our neighborhood uh, you know i might push the first battle at carruthers uh, speed yeah. hump closer to fairchild but i i don't know how also are they noisy yeah i, I can't really comment on that right now are they noisy so maybe ask that question why don't you write what you're going to say there? Yeah, so I think what and, and one of the decision points we have for this call is, you know, we again going back to this slide, we're in that neighborhood meeting, that red circle with the arrow. We're definitely going to be moving on to a final design that's a little more detailed and whatnot. Um, from that point, we have a choice, or we don't have a choice. You all, the neighborhood, have a choice. We can either go after that final design once we have a design that's going to be probably pretty close to this um, concept. We might see if a circle could be fit in Clemens. Maybe, maybe not. We may look at the white edge line markings, and we can finalize the design, and we can just go ahead and put it open for a vote. Where if you're a residential property owner that with your property touching Crothers Road or Grace Point Lane, uh, you'll receive that mailer ballot. That voting window will open. The final design will be available on the website for you to review. Um, another option is we could also uh, hold the ability for a second neighborhood meeting. It would be very similar to this, and we would have that final, more detailed design available to talk through just like we're talking through here. Um, we found that different streets, different neighborhoods have different preferences. Some want to maybe skip that second meeting and kind of just get maybe speed things up even if it's by one or two months. Some neighborhoods really want to take another look at it and make sure there's a lot of feedback. And uh, we're truly open to either one. That's kind of another decision we want to make sure we understand generally what some of the feedback is on that from this group. I see Daniel's raised his hand. So, Daniel, I'm going to give the floor to you first. Yeah, so yeah. Um, thanks for taking yeah. my question here. Um, I just have a question about, um, you know, this is such a major thoroughfare for the neighborhood and um am i understanding correctly that only the houses that um in that one map that you showed that are kind of like on grace point lane or on the road that we're talking about we're the only ones that are kind of determining um what's going to happen we're the only ones that'll be voting um because because the neighborhood is really built so much around community I kind of just wanted to um, bring this up with the people on the call. Like, do we need to consider what the rest of the community thinks? Do we need to do anything, any legwork there? And is there anything you can recommend um, that that we do as as a you know just like a handful of neighbors within this greater community? Sure. So I'll I'll kind of provide my thoughts and then I'll step back since I think you're kind of asking the neighborhood for some input directly, Daniel. So, um, yeah, the, the properties that are directly adjacent to the streets are the ones that would vote. Um, so essentially the ones that are colored in here in yellow, which I know is not very zoomed in, but hopefully that provides the picture. Um, as far as our suggestions, we just always encourage uh, any sort of neighborhood, you know, coordination. It could be their Facebook group or an email blast or just letting people know about it, getting feedback. Um, some neighborhoods are not as interactive with each other, and some neighborhoods are extremely interactive. So it's just all, all depends. Um, th these would be the eligible voters, but we always encourage, however your community normally engages with each other, to kind of have a discussion about this and kind of just get some feedback um, because that may or may not sway some of the votes. 
uh, if people kind of understand what the general community feels. That's kind of what I'll leave it at. And Daniel, I'll let other members of the community kind of respond to you directly now. Part of the problem is that people that don't live right on Carruthers or Grace Point are some of the people that are speeding. So I really don't want to hear their opinion when they go flying by my house at 50 miles an hour. Yeah, I I totally get that. <laughs> as as someone who lives on the corner of Grace Point Lane and Pleasant Pleasant Street, right in the middle of of all of this, um, yeah, totally. Walk up, yeah. The guy, that's where the yeah Pleasant Street is one block. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I I do have another question. Um, in terms of the um. I, I know we've been talking about it all night and I've already forgot the actual name from this, the speed bumps, um, the, the speed cushions, uh, how well do they hold up to, um, heavily filled to dump trucks traveling 40 miles an hour? Because are these things like going to get ripped off, you know, ripped out of the road or what's the process for replacing them? If, you know, I don't expect, um, a lot of these, dump trucks to really care about them. Yeah. Right. So I've, I've got a few thoughts, Daniel, uh, a few of them are kind of, yeah, I'll start with, um, the dump trucks may not care about them, but if they're carrying a load and they go too fast and it kind of jerks it, I don't know, they may start caring about them. That's just the initial thought I have. Um, that's a little bit of a careless comment, but that was the initial thought I had that I sure hope they will slow down, but, um, they may want to, but the, 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 the more, I guess, technical answer is, uh, these cushions are fabricated pretty well for the kind of vehicles and speeds and, you know, weights we're talking about. Um, so they are designed to withstand, uh, kind of impact, um, of, of vehicles of all sizes. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is that they do come with a warranty. So, you know, and dot, if there are damaged, uh, speed cushions, uh, they, they can make a warranty claim with the vendor to kind of get those replaced. So just kind of wanted to add that. The other thing I want to add is once the traffic calming program, we're here talking with you. If a speed cushion design is what goes up for a vote, if the vote is successful and these get installed, um, that becomes something NDOT maintains. And so if there is ever some sort of damage or anything, you can go back to that Hub Nashville slide uh, just after the fact, after the traffic calming is installed, um, that could be a way you could let NDOT know if there is something wrong with them or damaged. It would be NDOT's responsibility to, uh, you know, repair or perhaps replace them as needed. Does that kind of answer, Daniel? Yeah, absolutely. Especially towards towards the end of um, of your answer there. I was, okay. you know, really, my question was designed to try to have a better understanding of uh, what happens after the project's considered wrapped up and if these things are damaged. You know, is there a process in place for repairing them or is the neighborhood just on our own? And we're, st you know, where you get to take walks and stand there and look at up, look at these torn speed up cushions, you know, it, 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 yeah, I, I, could, I believe Crothers Road, Grace Point Lane is a public street. Uh, that's why we're here talking with you all. So it'd be just like if a signpost got knocked down, uh, you know, you all could report it to NDOT Hub Nashville. Hey, you got a knocked down signpost, probably need to repair, or replace it. It would be similar, similar with the speed cushions. I wanted to uh, follow up on something that, that Dave just said a second ago. Um, I, I live on Princeton Hill at the at the top of the hill, and for 13 years, I've watched cars come across the county line from Rutherford County, come down Carruthers in front of the sales center, doing 50, 60 miles an hour. And to me, they're the majority of the people that are speeding from Grace Point up to Battle. It's it's not uh, the residents of Carruthers themselves. <clears throat> but I'm just saying, I've seen them come in uh, from Rutherford County uh, going down Carruthers, and those are the ones I see doing the, uh, the worst speeding anyway. Gotcha, sounds like it's some cut through traffic, okay. So one one thing somebody brought up um, in the text uh, was noise, and I, I was interested to hear about that as well, because uh, sometimes 
you know, people will slow down and then speed up real fast and, you know, it increases the noise or maybe even the deflection of the vehicle by the traffic humps itself creates noise. Could you mention a little bit about what your experience has been with the level of noise that uh, traffic calming creates? Sure. Any- so, yeah, I'll answer it in two ways. First of all, you are absolutely right. It, it There is noise. Um, it could be noise from tires hitting a modular rubber device. It could be the noise of, you know, if someone has squeaky brakes and they're having to brake and slow down in advance of them, or when they start accelerating again, uh, the noise from that. Um, so the answer is yes, there is, there could be some noise. Um, speed cushions may create more noise compared to a smooth asphalt, what your road is today. The trade-off would be the speed cushions are also going to help reduce vehicle speeds along the street. And going back to that vision zero uh, slide, where if there's a pedestrian that gets hit, yeah. um, the slower speeds are going to have a higher survival. So it, both are correct. It's just really the trade-off so, of, well, of that kind of thing. The second thing is you asked about the level of noise. Yeah. I do not have a, a technical yeah. engineering answer for you as far as like a decibel level. Yes, I don't know. Um, what, what I would suggest is, um, is you could go and actually drive over some other speed cushions mm-hmm. uh, in Nashville, or if you wanted to see or drive and listen to what they sound like when people go over them. Um, the Nashville Traffic Calming website does have a, some, a map called the Traffic Calming Tracker. So if you Google Nashville Traffic Calming, and then you go to that website and you see something called the Traffic Calming Tracker, there's a map that has a different a myriad of colored lines that shows different streets that receive speed cushions. And so that is really what our usual suggestion is if people really want to see them or drive over them or hear what kind of sound they make. Um, really, because each of you may have your own opinion and about the noise, if it's you know acceptable to you or not acceptable to you. So that would be our suggestion is maybe to go check out some other streets that are nearby. Again, going by the traffic calming webpage, opening that tracker map and seeing where they're at. That would be my, my best response to that. That's a great idea, Brad. I'd encourage everybody to do that. And I, I am, I'm trying to brainstorm on streets. Uh, I, I can't think of any off the top of my head that are closest to you all. So I'm probably just going to say the best answer I have right now is just going to that traffic calming called a tracker. It's a map based tool. A different color lines mean different things. Um, but yeah, that, that's the best answer I have. There's a couple that look very much like these over on Barron's Wood going towards Nolansville off of uh, Kid Road. Mm-hmm. But those were those were installed by Rutherford County. We we need to look at stuff that's approved by NDOT. So it needs to be within Davidson County to evaluate it. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, and I would say that's a valid point. Um that yeah, those those would not be in Davidson County if they're in Rutherford. Are they saying they're made of different materials? I'm not sure if they're fit now. Just different, potentially different design standards, Gerald. Makes sense. trying to check to see if I can find a few locations that Nashville has done that are closest to you all. Um, there is a street called Colbertson Road. Uh, I believe that one has recently received speed cushions. It's over in the direction of Lenox Village. Um, those are, pr- I think the cushions we would d- propose on your street would be a little longer in length than perhaps what Colbertson got, but Colbertson, would be uh, one example, and there's a there's a few others kind of in the Creve Hall area, such as Huntington Parkway and West Crest Drive. Those are just two or three streets. Again, you can check the uh, the, the tracker map, um, and if there's any uh, different colored lines, mean different things. But we always like to encourage people to educate themselves because um, it it kind of comes down to opinion after a while, and everybody can kind of form their own opinion that way. So again, I think um, we've heard general some some positive feedback on the uh, on the concept design. I think 
one thing we want to make sure we're kind of getting here is, you know, is there a desire for us to finalize the design and move into ballot, or is there a desire for us to finalize the design and then have a second meeting uh, similar to this one where we're looking at a more detailed design showing kind of more uh, in zoomed in uh, where the cushions would be proposed, which we're going to do anyways. That's going to be available for the vote. It's just a matter of is there a desire for a second meeting like this before the vote begins? That's like another meeting we do. Are there some to that? Probably get a status of where we're at. And, and while people are thinking about Dylan, are there any more questions or comments we've gotten in the chat? I want to make sure I check in with you again. I think we answered most of the questions. Uh, the yeah. last one that was left open was revolving around the second meeting. Okay. Well, I'm I'm seeing uh I'm trying to keep my you know eye on some things, but I, I see a few people expressing an interest for a second meeting, and so um th that means that we're very much prepared and willing to have that second meeting. So I think we've heard enough feedback now where there's a desire to look at that final design and look at it. So I think. What we're going to do is we're going to plan on finalizing our designs we talked about. It'll be more detailed. Uh, we will coordinate with the council member and the lead applicant, look to schedule a second meeting, very similar to this one. Uh, and then after that second meeting, we would expect to then move that design to the voting uh, ballot period. I'm happy to do that. Just, that's, uh, we want to give you all the option. We've definitely heard your feedback. So, yeah. Yeah, I see Daniel's got his hand raised. Yeah, I just real quick for um, all of us residents that are on this uh, call. Do we have like a centralized place where we can connect online uh, an email address or something where if we wanted to have kind of our own neighborhood meeting to discuss this a little bit. Uh, does anybody have any information uh, about how we should go about doing that? We've been using uh, Facebook page. Uh, what's it currently called? Brothers Farms Community Neighborhood Group or something like that. Um, and then we've been hosting individual uh, Facebook meetings and sometimes some meetings in people's homes, uh, as well as at the Cane Ridge Community Club. So. Okay, uh, awesome. So basic, so. Um, probably just find each other then on Facebook then on the, the Carruthers Community page. Sure, sure. Ooh, okay, and great. We'd love, to, love to add you to our email list as well, because I, I think that's how a lot of people on this call got noticed. <laughs> okay. Uh, is that something I can just publicly give to you verbally right now? Uh, can you type it in the thing? Yep. Here it's on now, too. Yes. And Meg's on, so that really... Uh -huh. I saw that Comments. Maybe. Marvel. I saw her in the comments. She was in the chat. Okay. See, Gerald, did you all have a comment? Sorry, I, I heard something from you. I just want to make sure I didn't miss it. Okay. Um, does, yeah. Any other comments or questions? Uh, again, we'll finalize the design, we'll coordinate with the council member and the lead applicant, and we'll, we'll definitely have a second meeting similar to that one. Those will be the next steps. But uh, before we adjourn, any other questions or comments? Uh, I just wanted to ask a question, Brad. Uh, like, like I say, I'm I'm seeing the the bigger issue being the volume of traffic uh, that's coming through the neighborhood. That's not part of the neighborhood, uh, how do we um, proceed with with maybe making some complaints in that regard? Um, my suggestion would be, my, my suggestion would be the hub Nashville route, but I guess my question would be if you're complaining about the amount of traffic, what are some solutions you're hoping could be considered? Uh, Wayne? Uh, I was I was on a call with uh, Don Smith Smithson as I was driving up here to my mom's house, um, and we were specifically addressing the failure of Metro to maintain 
the integrity of the proposed street plan that's in that UDO. Uh, and so the work that we're all doing together about learning more about the UDO ourselves next week, as well as uh, the identification of specific issues like the ones that you rightly bring up, uh, and then take action as a group uh, with uh, the powers that be, uh, whether it's our council member, I don't know that that's our best route, uh, or with the vice mayor or with the mayor or with the uh, department heads. And that's, you know, we're going to have to do that as a group to make this a better place to live for the next 30 years. Yeah, I was just uh, trying to find out, John, if, if Brad was the tree we needed to be barking up or we needed to go find another tree. He's, he's not the he's not the tree we need to be barking up. There are several yeah. other trees that we will do that. We we are the traffic calming speed reduction tree between Battle and Oak Trail Drive. We're a very, <laughs> very, very specific tree, but we think we're a very good tree and we this tree can help. Thanks, guys. Excellent. Well, thank you all. This has been a great uh, dynamic discussion and uh, interaction. So we really appreciate everybody taking the time tonight. Please have a good rest of your evening. Our action items are to finalize that design. And then we'll reach out to the appropriate people to schedule a second meeting just like this. Until then, uh, stay safe and have a good one.